let's try some compression techniques on your pelvis to restore some of the fluid state into your low back. Let's start with a deep hip glide and shear. Sit up on the top of your roller and I want you to bring your hands in front and slowly roll over your sit bones. I want you to first notice, do your sit bones glide over the roller evenly or are you feeling one hip bone is flipping over the roller before the other? If you're noticing that, you're already noticing some imbalances in your hip that could be causing you low back pain. To get on your deep hip, all you need to do is slightly tilt your body over to one side and keep your knees together and begin gliding on the lower surface of the outer part of your hip. This is what's called your deep hip and these are the muscles that stabilize our hip when we walk and keep our knees straight. So if you have knee pain, you might find that this is a very tender area of your body. As you glide, remember, keep the movement small and local. If you find a barrier or an area of restriction, get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then meet the barrier. To shear, just open and close your knee. This is your indirect shear. Remember, if you sustain compression on the roller and the roller stays still and you move a joint, that's an indirect shear. Or, if you want, try a direct shear by straightening your leg and slowly moving your body a little over the roller back and forth. Remember, after you create a shear, just wait and give your tissue a moment to adapt. Take a focused breath and come back up to center. Let's try it over on the other hip. Bring your body slightly over to the side and begin gliding the side of your hip. If you have any type of hip pain, if you feel any tightness in your shoulder or your hips to do the glide this way, keep your foot on the floor and just open your knee to create the glide. Then get smaller and smaller, find a barrier, and begin your shear by indirectly opening and closing the knee. Or you can straighten out your leg and rotate your body over the roller. These are easy ways to create fluid exchange in the joints and the hip region where you need to stay stable so that you walk without compressing your knee. Remember, after you do the shear here, just wait for a moment, take a focused breath, and come on up to sitting. Let's try SI joint glide. You'll place your hands behind your body so that your fingertips point outward. Now this arm position is important so that we don't cause any excess tension on our neck or shoulders. Before you begin to glide on the tail triangle and the SI joint, I want you to notice that your core has to stay engaged. So keep your feet and hands light on the ground so that your core naturally engages. And then begin gliding over your tail triangle. Nice and slow, watch how I keep the movement local and controlled to the back of my pelvis. Again, I don't have a lot of weight on my hands, so if you're feeling like your neck is getting tense, just find your core by creating your sound shh, to get your core to activate a little more aggressively. To get on your SI joint, all you need to do is slightly tip your knees to the left or to the right and create the gliding motion. In this position, you won't do a shear on your SI joint. I'll show you that lying on your back with your hips on the roller. Try to glide over both sides of your SI joint. I want you to notice if one SI joint feels more tender than the other, that's another sign that you could have some hip imbalances and this can cause you low back pain. Now let's try the side hip. I want you to bring one forearm down to the ground and slightly tip your body a little further than the SI joint. Now you're on what's called your side hip. I want you to glide here. Take a focused breath. These are the muscles called your internal hip rotators and these are also stabilizers of the hip that keep your knees stable as you move or walk forward. So if you run and you feel like you have a lot of knee pain, this is going to be one of your go-to moves so that you can keep your knees nice, strong and stable and balanced. Remember, find a barrier. As soon as you find that barrier, don't land on the barrier, meet the barrier. Just ease up against it and then create your shear. Again, an indirect shear would be sustaining pressure where the roller stays still and just moving your hip joint in slight rotation. Or you can straighten out your leg and roll your entire body over the roller. In this area, it's also safe to do another type of direct shear called cross friction, where you just slightly shift your hips forward and back. 
you wouldn't want to do this on your deep hip because your sciatic nerve is there and you could impinge it. So this is a safe area to work on with the cross friction. And again, once you do shearing, wait for a moment. Give the tissue a second to adapt. Find your core and let's go over to the other side. Lift your body up and slightly tip over to the other side. Let's start with your glide. So remember, gliding is this small local compression technique to investigate the tissue for barriers. Remember, barriers are those areas where connective tissue has lost its fluid state. And so the interfaces of connective tissue and muscle have gotten tacked down. So find that area, get smaller and smaller. And remember, meet the barrier. Don't blast it, don't land on it. Just edge up against it and start with that indirect shear. The indirect shear is to move the hip open and close, nice and slow. Keep your core engaged to make sure you don't have too much pressure on your shoulder as you do this. Then if you want to do the direct shear, straighten your leg and move your body over the roller. Take some focused breaths here. Remember, in this area, if you feel a lot of flipping or lumpiness in the hip, sustain your pressure and try cross friction, just shifting your hips forward and back. This is another way to create a direct shear without creating too much excess pressure. Take a nice focused breath and let's wait and give the tissue a moment to adapt. Find your core and come back up to sitting. This is a great sequence to add to any of the sequences that you already know to create added hydration for the low back release.